Praise Jesus. Before you sit down, say to your neighbor, it is better to be raised than to just grow up. Say to your neighbor, it is better to be raised than to just grow up. I said it is better to be raised than to just grow up. Father Lord, I come before you today. Pray. Father Lord, I come before you today to be raised by your word. Father Lord, may my spirit be alive and alight to hear you, to understand you, to comprehend you, and to be my body be willing to carry out your instructions. Let all the glory come to you, O God. Thank you, God of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before I traveled, we had taken our two-week break. So right now we're starting another five-week stretch on the subject of the kingdom, uh, thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. So um, you know our scripture is Matthew chapter 6, our foundational scripture. Please open to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Matthew 6, 9 and 10. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So we are looking at the dynamics of the kingdom of God. Because more than 70% of what Jesus talked about was the kingdom. Hallelujah. So he had a ton of parables that kept saying the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like, and the kingdom of God is like unto. So Jesus was very invested in the subject of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So we started this series to begin to look at the kingdom of God. Why was the kingdom of God of such importance to Jesus? What was Jesus trying to help us see when he started to talk about the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. That's what we are looking at, yes? Hallelujah. Now, one of the things that I said to us last week, uh, the last time I came, remember we're looking at the covenants. The, um, um, what, what was the topic again? The pillars. Pillars of divine covenant or kingdom covenant. Hallelujah. And I told you that, ev that divine covenants have five parts. Do you remember? They transcended the hierarchy, the ethics, the sanctions, and the inheritance of God. I told you that the transcendence of God have to do with the fact that God is supreme and sovereign and he's in charge of all things. So therefore, every kingdom covenant emanates from him and he's the, he's the one, um, if you like, the executor of the covenant. Hallelujah. Then I told you that the kingdom of God has hierarchy. That is, you don't just come, the con because the kingdom of God and his covenant are hierarchical, what that means is that when you cut a covenant with God, it must follow the order. Hallelujah. You will never, it will never be uh, God the Son, God the Father, and God the Spirit. You know that. It will never be God the Spirit, God the Son, and God the Father. The order is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Praise Jesus. So when you cut a covenant, that order must be reflected. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That unless we align with both the transcendence of God, that is the understanding that God is in charge, and the hierarchy, that means to say that there is an order in which God wants his kingdom to be administered, you cannot cut a covenant with the kingdom of God and expect to see the, uh, the, the benefits of that covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll say this thing now, and I'll say it at the end again. For those of you who think the old, cover, oh, the old Testament is not relevant, let me announce it to you. It is the old covenant that is no longer relevant because there is a new covenant. The old Testament is still relevant. Don't run around saying, oh, no, if they wrote it in the Old Covenant, it, it, the Old Testament, it doesn't apply to me. Because that's why you are leaving money on the table. The Old Covenant can no longer, because Jesus is the mediator of a new and better covenant, yes? But the Old Testament, 
That is the laws, the rules, the mind of God in Genesis all the way to Malachi. They still apply to you and me today. Praise Jesus. So those of you who go around and say, well, I don't tithe because tithe is of the Old Covenant or Old Testament, for instance. That's why you don't have money. Because Jesus said in the New Testament, he said, I did not come to nullify the law. I came to fulfill it. So the Old Covenant may have been voided because there is a new, better, and superior covenant in place. But the Old Testament is not voided. Hallelujah. It is the Old Testament that we, the, we have the Ten Commandments that say, Honor thy father and thy mother. Try this day and say, because you are a new covenant believer, and don't honor your father and your mother, you will see, your, you will see how, how far. Do you understand that? Have I given you, we can close now, Seth. That's a whole preach on its own. But we have things I want to say. So in that last um, service that I was here, I drilled into the transcendence and the hierarchy of God. Yes, you remember. Even if you don't remember, go and read your notes. Praise Jesus. I've just I've been, done the recap that I want to do. But going forward, I want us to move quickly to the ethics of divine covenants. The ethics of divine covenant. Hallelujah. What did I say we are going to look at? The ethics of divine covenant. Hallelujah. What is ethics? Ethics are moral principles that govern behavior. Moral principles that govern behavior. Now the covenant is a how do I say the covenant is a divine is a spiritual thing yes yet the covenant has ethics standards principles that govern behavior within a covenant with God hallelujah so when I say the ethics of covenant I'm talking about the principles that God had put in place that there are moral principles that we do daily that enhance the capacity of God's covenant or your covenant with God to yield to you. Praise Jesus. Ethics are the examination of the rational justification of our moral judgments. Big English, yes? Ethics... I will explain it, but let me just give it to you. The examination of the rational justification for our moral judgments. Let me explain it to you. What is an exam? An exam or an examination is to check. Do you understand? So ethics are how we check the rational justification of our moral judgments. The decisions we make the choices we make, the stances we take, the postures we adopt within a covenant must be put through. The, they must be checked against the standard of God. So ethics are the examination of the rational justification for our moral judgments. So if I wake up today and say I want to marry three husbands, Listen to me. There are standards in the earth. As a believer, there is a covenant in the earth that all those of you that are here, we used to judge whether Sister B is okay. Are you with me? Let me explain it in another way. How many of us know that America is one of the most loose canon nations in the world? How many of us know? They, you know, they have no... Anything goes in America. But how many of you know that a lot of American leaders, both in the private sector and the public sector, sector have been disgraced out of office because they committed adultery? As loose as America is that say we don't care, we will do what we want. Once a man is a president or a governor and he takes money 
from somebody that is asking for a contract, what do they do? If they find out as bad morally bankrupt as America is, they will tell the man to resign. And the man will resign every single time. Why? Because of ethics. The examination of the moral, of the, of the rational justification for our moral judgments. So, when you say you are a believer, and you, because believers, the way we transact in this kingdom is covenant. That's the way we transact in this kingdom. Your giving is covenant. Your prayer is covenantal. Your worship is covenant. Everything in this, in this kingdom is covenantal. So if everything in this kingdom is covenantal, when I make a decision as a citizen of this kingdom, or better still, as an ambassador in this kingdom, others can look at that my decision through what the Bible says about those covenants. What are the standards of those covenants? Hallelujah. And by the standard of those covenants, if my decision is okay, you can tell. Before God will sit on his throne and decide I will bless BMM or I will not bless her. I will bless Pastor Val, I will not bless him. I will give Pastor Val what he's asking and I, or I will not give him. If you were paying attention, you can already tell whether I violated the ethics of my covenant or whether Pastor Val violated the ethics of his covenant. Hallelujah. I was talking to someone on Friday and I said to him that I am very sensitive to sin and sinful living. He was looking at me. Was, I, was, I told him, I said, I literally break out in a rush if someone is sinning around me. I can't, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. If I'm watching you and that's, that's why I quickly put a buffer before you. I don't want it. Because it pollutes my system and my environment. The reason that is so, when people don't understand it, they say she's always judgmental. But if you be truthful, it's very rare that I will call you and say you are doing this, you are doing that. I just put a buffer before you because you're, you see, I don't care what you say. Let's say you have 5,000 gallons of water, which is what a tanker gives, right? And then you were there and somebody took a one gallon. One gallon, that's four liters. And took that four liters and went to the gutter and fetched water from the gutter and came and poured it in your 5,000 gallons. And there's no filtration system. How many of you will drink it? Because even though it's four liters or one gallon as against 5,000, that water is no longer clean or pure. It's polluted. Do you get it? What I do, why I'm sensitive to sin and sinful living around me is because it pollutes my 5,000. I don't care that it is your one cup. It is your one spoon. I'm not the one doing it. I don't want it around me. That's why people say you don't, you don't, you, you are very easy. You know, you walk away. I walk away because that lifestyle by the covenant, I can tell is not how we ought to live. We have a covenant. I can tell that you see this lifestyle. This is not what our covenant. And since you will stand boldly and say, I worship Jesus. And I stand boldly and say, I worship Jesus. The only thing I know how to do is to move away from you. So that people will know that the Jesus you are talking about is probably different from my Jesus. I'm not judging you. I'm just preserving me. There are ethics for, 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 for kingdom covenants. Hallelujah. Are you listening? So God's covenants are ethically established. Ethics are the standards that impose reasonable obligations for restraint within a covenant. Let me explain, say that one more time, then I'll explain it. Ethics are the standard that impose reasonable obligations for restraint. So you walk in the ministry. Everybody there takes a bribe. Hallelujah. It's the norm. It's what everybody does. From the security man to the ogre, the director, everybody is on in on the take. Everybody gets their own court. Everybody does it. It's not, it, so when you get there, it doesn't even look like sin anymore. It doesn't look like it's against the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria anymore. Everybody does it. Hallelujah. 
as a kingdom ambassador, what will restrain me are the ethics of my covenant. They are the standard that impose res the reasonable obligation for restraint upon me. It's not because if I take it and I go home, I will die. All of you have not died now. I won't die. But I have an allegiance to one who is greater. And the one that I have an allegiance to says, Bidemi, don't dabble in this kind of thing. So even though I'm in an office where they have 50 people who are doing it, if I remain in that office, I ought to be the one person that will not do it. Now, you know this is not easy. Because the Bible says it like say they drink iniquity like water. So it is the norm. It is the order of the day. What that means is even when you don't want, somebody will come and offer it to you. Hallelujah. It is all they do. Even if you don't want, someone will come and offer it to you. But I have to restrain myself. I cannot change everybody. I cannot preach to every. Even if I preach to them, they won't listen anyway. So not do it. But I have to. So it takes restraint on my part not to do it. They have, you know, they have many names for it. They have many names for it. One of the names for it is finder's fee. When it comes to contract, it sounds really innocent. And it makes sense. Because true, true, if you they find something, I help you see them, and the thing gets, it, it gets, you ought to give me something. Does someone understand this? So we call it finder's fee. But I used to tell my friend, call it finder's fee from now till heaven comes. It is a sin as a believer. Because what they do is, if the contract was meant to be 2 million, they will make it 2.2 million. They will never give you the finder's fee from their pocket. They will add to it, which means they will pad it so that they can give you your finder's fee. So please don't tell me. Please don't tell me. I'm in the middle of, I'm planning a boot camp and I have I had spoken to some organization and they would have given me maybe up to 10 delegates until the HR person started to speak English. And I said to them, I don't do that. You can keep your delegates. Unless Jesus helps me, I will lose between 8 and 10 million in the deal as I'm going. But I would rather lose 8 million and preserve my soul than take 15 million and then that destroys all my journey for all of my life. I'm not going to do it. It's not because I don't need 15 million. Don't, I, I don't have it in my account, so it's not that I don't need it. I'm not going to take it because the standard of the covenant that I have restrains me from taking it. Do you understand that now? Do you understand it? That's why Sunday is the least time that you are a Christian. Because on Sunday, you have no choice to, but to be a Christian. We're in church. How many of you can stand up there now and begin to shoot F-bombs? We will escort you downstairs because you are polluting this atmosphere. So everybody thinks on Sunday is when they are a Christian. No, you are supposed to be a Christian on Monday to Saturday. On Sunday, you come for top up. On Monday to Saturday, you will live to be a Christian again. But what happens to us? Some of us come on Sunday is when we are most Christian. On Monday, anything goes. <laughs> thank you Jesus so there are standards God's covenants are ethically established what this means is that God's covenants have specific guidelines or rules that govern them for instance it says the soul that sin it shall die that means that when, no matter where it is on the face of the earth if a soul sins that soul must die unless something else happens so it's now saints, uh, you know, how to ratify the soul that sinned shall die. What's the next thing? Without a shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. So Jesus now came and shed his blood. So even though my soul had sinned and I should die, because Jesus has shed his, no, his own blood, I'm now qualified for living. But it doesn't automatically make me live. How many of us know that? Because the Bible says if we confess our faults or if we confess our sins, 
God is faithful and just to forgive us. So even the soul that sinned shall die. So all of us are dead men walking in sin. Then Jesus, you know, without a shedding of blood, there can be no remission for sin. So Jesus came and shed his blood in your, because my blood is not even enough to wash handkerchief. No, talk of wash a whole human being. So they said, okay, make Jesus. Jesus said, I will do it. But Jesus did it. And some of us are walking and say, Jesus died for me. Have you confessed the sin? And have you received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Because if you don't confess the sin and receive forgiveness and then receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus might die, but you will still go to hell. Who understands me? I don't think that English is too much. You should understand it. So these are the ethical guidelines for, sal for salvation. So even though salvation is a spiritual exercise, there are ethical guidelines for salvation. Is everybody with me? Yes. Hallelujah. So to contravene those guidelines is to void the covenant of salvation in, the, in life. It's very easy. That's why there are pastor's children and they don't know Jesus. They were born in church. Their parents were already pastors before they were born. Their parents have been pastors. They are now 40 years. But they are headed for hell because they don't know Jesus. Because there's nothing like, because your pastor, your father is a pastor, you will go to heaven. That's not part of the ethics that govern the covenant of salvation. Are you listening to me? <laughs> so in Genesis chapter 2, in verse 15 to 17, God put man in the garden to tend and keep it. He also set the ethical code in that place. So when he put Adam in the garden, he said, tend and keep this garden. And else, effectively, what he said to them was, you can rule in my kingdom, starting from this garden, but you must rule under me. You will rule it as I said it. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. You will rule it as I said it. And what was the first thing he said? He said, you can eat of every tree in this garden. But there are two that you cannot eat. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the tree of life, obviously. You can't touch those ones. So the day that Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what happened? They were cast out of the garden because the covenant that God had, they violated the ethics of the covenant. Can you hear me? That's why you are married. The Bible says marriage is honorable above all things and the bed undefiled. And you find yourself in adultery. You already voided the covenant of marriage. Unless you do two things. Confess to God and receive forgiveness. Confess to your spouse and receive forgiveness. Make another plea. Are you listening to me? There's nothing like, hey, my pastor is doing it. So your pastor... Is drinking gutter water. You want to drink gutter water too? The thing I like about kingdom covenant is every man for himself. God for us all. Praise Jesus. Are you listening to me? So he told Adam, you can rule, but you will rule under my command. It's how I say it will be. So I was having a conversation with Antonia yesterday. I said, I don't care what you know. No, she was the one that said, say, I don't care what you know or how you do. If you come to my house, my, rule, my house, my rules. You can't come to my house and see that, yes, now, you see that I'm putting my black pot in the fridge. If you will not put my black pot in the fridge, you have to first tell me the reason. Sister B, this black pot in the fridge is staining this white fridge. Can we change it? Better have that conversation with me. Because you don't know why I put my black pot in the fridge. You don't know whether that's where my juju is. Do you understand? If you carry my black pot out of the fridge, thinking that you are helping me, you go here we. My house, my rules. You can't be a tenant, a, a, a visitor in my house and I, you came, my living room was arranged a certain way. You have no understanding. You do not know that my sofa, I'm using it to cover something on that end. Before I come back from work, you move it around without asking me first. My house, my rules. You have contravened the covenant of living in that house. You, I can ask you to leave that day. 
The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God's house, God's rules. Are you listening to me? So, what I'm saying is that God's covenant have built in them something called a cause and effect relationship. If you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. Those are the ethics. So, cause and effect. We choose, if we choose to follow our way in a covenant relationship, then the effect is we lose our benefits and face consequences. It's just as simple as that. There is no born againism that is going to change that. I know you are so born again that you don't have flesh anymore. It's not changing that thing. It is the standard. That's the ethics. Is someone listening? In Joshua chapter 1, in verse 7, God made it clear through Joshua that to thrive in the promised land, Israel must do what? They must live according or do according to all the law that God had given. Look at your Joshua chapter 1. You must do according to all the law that God had given through Moses. How did we Israel do going forward? Every time they obeyed, God will keep them in the promised land. How many of us have read our Bible to that place? Anytime they disobey, God will ship. He will tell, he will just open, the enemies will come and take them. You see that the people of who were in covenant with God will be in slavery for 70 years. As captives in another land. The people who are in covenant with the God of heaven will be shipped off into slavery. 70 years they are in slavery. And somebody has not sat down to look at it. To recognize that the reason that is happening is because, because it was a pattern. People could not sit down and say, why is this always happening to us? Every time we begin to sin, God will do what he needs to do. What? He will just look away. The enemy will come and take them away. Then we go, one thing God never did was, nobody ever took their land. Be away for 70 years. They, you know, come, but in the moment that you are not follow, living by the ethics, they can take you anywhere. God will keep you, you won't die there, but you will suffer in dignity that you shouldn't suffer as an ambassador of the kingdom of God. Praise Jesus. How many of us know that even those of us that are new covenant believers, we are going through that. How many of us know? Because the Bible, the scripture in the Bible that said, when you, uh, when you break the hedge, the serpent shall bite, does not know Old Covenant, Old Testament or New Testament. It's God's word. It is alive and it is active. You know, last week, Esther Eden on Wednesday night, she was sending me messages. And I said, this is the bastardization of grace. You know, people say there is a grace gospel and they are teaching nonsense and leading people astray, telling people you don't have responsibility. And that is very far from who God is. If you were the one that created this earth and you gave it to people to look after, will you not give them rules? You, you, the small two by two that you managed to build in your village, you gave rules. Every time you go home, you'll be doing like this. You say, when I know they sweep this compound, I go throw away on a load for outside. Then this entire world that belongs to God, you think that God not going to throw away your load for outside. You are joking. This kingdom is administered by covenants. And covenants are ethical. It is not the nations of the earth that started policing. It is God that started policing in the Bible. So even if police will now, even if police just want to punish you, they have to trump up a charge that says you contravened the covenant. Otherwise, they can't do it. And somebody thinks that covenants are jokes. You had, if I know you did the joker, you never know me. Hallelujah. Think about it. Can you rebel against the law of gravity? What's the law of gravity? Dollar, what's the law of gravity? What goes up must come down. So if you are upstairs in this balcony and you jump up through the balcony, where do they go? Down. Waiting there for down, concrete. 
So what's going to happen? You will break bone. So you can't say today, the 26th day of May 2024, I no longer believe in the law of gravity. Jump, make we see. Because that you don't believe in it does not mean it does not exist. Is someone listening to me? So they say, I, I don't believe in those things anymore. Oh, no, man. <laughs> I repeat to you. I don't, uh, you know, we are new customers. In I don't believe in that nonsense anymore. See your life now. Now, as people's life be, now your life be so. I, I, it, it upsets me that why can you have this kind of God and have all these kinds of promises and not stay within the confines of the ethics of that covenant so that your life will be a life of enjoying God? Even if things are hard, there are covenants that say even as things are hard, God will be inside fire with you. Why should I go into fire by myself when I'm already a child of God? Now me and God go dead the fire. It's not that I can't enter fire. If fire is what I have to enter, if it's part of my journey, it's part of my journey. But God must follow me because I have read it in the Bible, say God, they follow people, enter fire. Do you understand that? But when you contravene the ethics of the covenant, who's going to, which, which God is coming to fire with you? So they look you from there me now. The point I'm making is when we, you know, the enemy is so invested in us breaking covenant because he knows when he breaks covenant, when we break covenant, God is justified to turn away from us. If you understand this thing that I'm trying to teach you today, you'll be very careful with your life. Everybody that knows you will say you are judgmental. But that's because you are careful with your life. See, I know if you tell you make you know, may you know, you know Sabi swim, make you know enter water where the waves high. I can I beg you, I can counsel you, but if you won't enter, you okay, feel free. But no carry me for nobody. This that's what this is about for me. If God did not tell me to teach it, I will sit down in that chair. I will be leaving it. You'll be wondering what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything. If you do these things that the covenant say you should do, you don't need juju. The reason why we are grabbing all kinds of things is because we're not doing what God told us to do. Praise Jesus. So all covenants or kingdom covenants are ethical. Hallelujah. There are ethics regarding our covenant. Number two for today, all kingdom covenants have sanctions. Remember when I was talking about ethics, I talked about the cause and effect rule. Hallelujah. I said there is a cause and effect relationship. So when you break ethics, what happens? You get consequences. That's the effect. Yes? So our next pillar of divine co uh, kin or kingdom covenant is sanctions. All covenants are executed with an oath or pledge attached to to it. You know that. This is talking about the terms and conditions of our covenants. God expects that the parties to the covenant will obey and keep the stipulations of the covenant. The parties to every covenant will obey and keep the stipulations. Now, knowing the character of God, he never contravenes anything. So, who is the problem? We are the ones that have itchy hands, itchy bum bums. We can't sit down in one place. Our mouth is scratch us. We can't keep quiet. We are the ones that have those anger issues. We are the ones that are consistently breaking what they said it should not be broken. <laughs> so, God expects that the parties to the covenants will obey and keep the stipulations of the covenant. And these are usually promises for obedience, penalties, for disobedience. It's very easy. I know when you read Deuteronomy 28, you know, I didn't, I didn't laugh now. Where, where? Church, I'm always laughing at you. We sit there and say, oh, the curses of the law have been abolished. Then when they want to make declaration, they will go to Deuteronomy 28. They will read 1 to 14. You know, and they will read the blessing. They will stop there. No, there's 15 to 28. And it is still part of God's word. This selective nonsense needs to stop. 
Why you go take for the same Deuteronomy, the same chapter, you take verse 1 to 14, you leave verse 15 to the end. Who you leave them for? <laughs> no, think about it now. If you not want Old Testament, where it says, Thou shalt not, thou shalt live and not die. So declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Where is there for Bible? Old Testament. I be val. Not be there a day. Now Old Testament, leave them. Begin to work and say, I go die. I no, I no go live. Because it's not in the New Testament. Or quote only the things that are in the New Testament. Christ has come to give me life and life more abundantly. So quote that one. Stop going around and saying, in the name of Jesus, I am the head, I'm not the tail. That thing is in the Old Testament. Uh, not, and I will not borrow. How you, meanwhile, the ones that says you should obey, you say, no, that's Old Covenant. Old, Old Testament, we don't do that anymore. Are you not the greatest joker of all time? And it vex. <laughs> oh gosh. So think about, let's go to Deuteronomy 28 so that it's not, I'm not, not just talking. Deuteronomy 28. It says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. What are the blessings? Number one, in verse three, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Say amen. amen. Blessed shall you be, shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of the heads of your heads, the increase of your cattle and the offsprings of your flocks. You said amen, Abi. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. <laughs> blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Say amen. amen. The Lord will cause you, cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. And in all to which you set your hand, he will, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord is giving you. The amen on the die down. Say amen. amen. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to you, he, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Amen. And the Lord, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground. In the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers, the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today and are careful to observe, So, shall you not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after them, other gods to serve them. Hallelujah. How many of us claim these scriptures? I claim it in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid. Claim it. Now, let's go and claim verse 15 downwards. Be it. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all the commandments of his statutes which I command you today. That all these causes will come upon you and overtake you. Say amen. amen. Cause shall you be in the city and cause shall you be in the country. Say amen. amen. That's the problem. We don't want to be cursed. But we want to be blessed. It's the same scripture. Sanctions. And promises. Be reading your Bible upside down first. 
Hallelujah. Tim Lady, what are you saying? That it doesn't it doesn't apply anymore. <laughs> there are conditions. Uh, uh, lawyers will tell you if you do this one, you go do that. If you do this one, you go get that one. If you disobey, nobody needs to curse you. Heaven has cursed you. Oh, Tom. This is your Bible. I did not write it. Unless today you are saying to me that's no longer the Bible, then you have to go and show me what we, what the, the what is the governing manual of this co contract or covenant that we have with heaven. But what do we do? We want all the good things to happen to us. I, see, here's the thing. If you were dealing with a human being, your landlord, for instance, he said to you, you signed an agreement, tenancy agreement. It's a four-bedroom house. And he said to you, Max, Max, he doesn't want to people who can live in that house consistently for a year to be more than eight. You signed it. But throughout 2023, every time they come there, there are 20 of you in that house. If that landlord comes and serves you eviction notice, then you stand and say, but I paid my rent. You paid your rent, but he also told you that there are certain things he does not want to see. And you signed it. You know, all of you, you don't read the agreement. You go just sign, go house. Then when it comes up, you'll be looking for lying, what's a be up and down. What be his name? You say he should, uh, he should come and go and do lawyer work for you. You are not serious. Is that his name? That's his name now. Uh -uh. Yes, now. Yes, he can take possession because you breach the terms. Tell them, lawyer. I know, I know, I don't, I don't like, I don't like all this nonsense and ingredients. Do you see it? Now, Bible, don't let anybody mislead you. You don't need to be a pastor. Just sit down in your house. Read it by yourself. Follow it. If you follow it, everything that God says will happen, will happen to you. Because God is not a man. He does not lie. So the way I see it, instead of trying, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, all of that argument in court is you are trying to dodge something. Don't, there's no need. When I read it, I say, you do am, I say, I do am. Why you do I look the book now? So, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Is someone being blessed this morning? Yeah. Even if you are not being blessed, say I'm being blessed. Yeah. In Deuteronomy 20, 30 verse 19, Moses said, I have said before you li life and death, the blessing and the cause. Then Moses now said something. He says, so choose life and live. All these things that I've been telling you is how we choose life. Praise Jesus. What is the uh, what is the thing that all you influencers, yeah, yeah, British on Facebook, are uh, talking about Nigeria now? The National Assembly said we should revert to the old national anthem. You are quarrelling. Have you ever sat down to listen to the, to the wordings of those of those of of the old and the new? Pastor Wumi, remember that every time we pray for Nigeria, I pray with Nigeria, we hate. I looked for it, don't you? But we are going to sing it. Let's sing it, if you know it. This, it says, Nigeria, we hate our own dear native land. Though tribe and tongue may differ in brotherhood we stand. Nigerians all and proud to serve our sovereign motherland. If you read, the, look at the second stanza, it says, Our flag shall be a symbol that truth and justice reign in peace of battle honored. And this we count as gain to hand on to our children a banner without stain. The third stanza says, O oh God of creation. Grant this our one request. Help us to build a nation. Something like that. Where no man is oppressed. And so with peace and plenty, Nigeria may be blessed. You want to use this to go and get likes on Facebook. Something is wrong with you. This is my children's inheritance. Somebody finally woke up and recognized that the words that we speak, that they are life. 
Somebody finally woke up and somebody said, let's write a new one. The new one you write now will be a cuckoo mama, cuckoo mama, because that's all you do these days. In 2019, the Lord told me to start do a prayer. It was, and we did that prayer for like a stretch of time. And we, you know, there was a day that we did at the top of the hour, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11, 12. We showed up online. We prayed for 30 minutes. It meant that in 24 hours, we prayed for 12 hours. And this, is the, this was what God told us to be praying. As someone thinks that clout, you want to use the destiny of your children and your grandchildren to collect clout. You're not okay. When I saw that thing, I just smiled and I shook my head. I said, these ignorant human beings will come again. You need to sit down sometimes. If you don't understand this, zip up your mouth. And if you want to understand, tell God. If you're a believer, tell God, show me. Why is this an issue now? Have we not been told that everything on this earth is, 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 is administered from heaven? See, whether you, you, you sing the old national anthem, or the new pledge, or whatever it is. If you break it, police can carry you. I, want, I don't want us to forget that one. Are you listening to me? So this, are the, this is how covenants are sanctioned. You know, when we, you know, we all, that's why we have never caught a covenant in this place that I will not give you one week in advance. If you know can't read that, you come and you sign. Now you and God and I get, it's not my problem. I will always give it to you one week ahead. I have moved the co execution of covenant for one week because I want you to read what we say we are signing and we are entering into, into with God so that when the day comes, uh, uh, you sign because you know. And then you now know that God is expecting this of me in 2024. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Every divine covenant has what? Sanctions. Did I say so? Yes. Every divine covenant has sanctions. So automatically to do anything that contravenes the Nigerian... Um, 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 the Nigerian anthem, just that promise there. See, this old national anthem, can you not see that everything that is happening in Nigeria now is against this prayer? Yes. <laughs> when <are they> play? <laughs> the bottom line is a divine covenant oath is that we are saying every divine covenant oath, when it comes to the item about sanctions, every one of them you are, we are saying May good come upon me as I follow you. And may evil come upon me if I reject you. If, just because they did not say it in these words does not mean that that's what it is. This journey with God, what, when you said, Jesus, I give you my life, what you said, let me, in case you did not know, so that you can decide now whether you want to go to Igbe worship, go back to Igbe worshiping. Let, so that you make an informed decision. When you became a believer, this is what you said. You said, Lord, may good come upon me as I follow you. And if I reject you, you are, it's okay if you send evil to me. See, if this is not you must pass. This is not your life must good. But at least if your life go good, no say you you know say your life go good. If your life go bad, still no say that you make the decision, make your life bad. That's why the more you follow God in all of this, the less prayer points you have. <coughs> because you're already doing everything that your covenant says. So you don't need to be praying long, long prayer. God sees you, he knows you, you know it. God will be kind to us in Jesus' name. Some of us have lived both where we were following, doing, following God. And some of us have lived, I, me, I have lived in following God. 
I have lived enough following God. You know, my, my village people, they will say, they will give you water, you go carry them, then they will give you oil, you go carry them. You go know the one way heavy. Every day, oil is heavier than water. Praise Jesus. So I'm not even supposed to preach this because you've lived it in your life. You know when you are following. You know how God does with you. Even though you are a new covenant believer. You also know when you are not following. You know how things get. Even though you are a new covenant believer. Count your teeth with your tongue. Number five. Every kingdom covenant has an inheritance. Covenants in God and with God have continuity. That's what inheritance is. Inheritance is something that one person works on to, you know, when they are dying or when they are at the end of their life, they bequeath it to their next, next of, um, to their next generation. So that's why the Bible says a good man does what? He leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. There are bad men. There are evil men that have left a ton of wealth and a ton of properties. It doesn't take 10 years before that thing vanishes. If you think I'm lying, if not for police, I will begin call people name now. For this Nigeria, you will begin look their life. Then you will know that this thing I'm saying is the truth. That it's not for you to leave the inheritance that is the problem. It's not that you cannot by thievery amass the things and leave it. That's not the problem. It is that the people who are living it for cannot see it. Some of them, sickness will not let them enjoy it. So, it is as clear as night and day. How do we miss it? I do not know. Because if somebody understands that, you will never thief Nigeria's money again. Somebody stole Nigeria's money. The Pekin will be two years. He pay up to wish for the Pekin in dollars. You are building the foundation of your children's life with stolen funds, the sweat of people, and you are surprised when the child becomes a drug addict. You don't know what is happening to you. You don't know. You don't know. See, some of us need to recognize that if me and my life no day important, if I don't go do one for myself, for these three children that God gave me, I will stand straight. I don't want my children suffering. Nobody needs to know that I did it. But heaven knows. And somehow it shows up a generation later. Because here's the thing. Those of you that watch Nollywood, I don't, those days that I used to watch Nigerian movies, you know, my favorite movies are not, um, it's not what this modern Nollywood. It was the Jimo Aliu theater. Those Yoruba ones. So you can see, the thing is very crystal clear. You can see it that the person that is doing bad already knows what he's, he, he knows, he knows, but his children never know. So he knows where all the pitfalls are. So he jumps them. He knows where he should kill animal. So he kills animal. Some of them know where they should kill human being. So they kill human beings. So their life seems to be going, but the children coming after them don't know. So the moment the door shuts on them because all men will die. Their children, innocent children, they did not steal. They now find that their life is going like this. Their life is a whirlwind. They can't understand it. They had the best education. They grew up in the best neighborhoods. But how is their life like this? Once in a while, they are sober, these children, and they can't understand why. Adam and Eve, what did they do? They ate of the tree, of the, the fruit of the tree of the garden of good and evil that God told them not to eat. What was the con consequence of that thing? Death. It says you will die. Is that not it? The first speaking that they born, one killed the other. They play. So this transgenerational impact of kingdom covenants 
in inheritances can be traced in the life of individuals. It can be traced in families. It can be traced in church. It can be traced in societies at every level. One person ate really good caviar one day in America and said, you know what? We're going to take Bibles out of schools. So they started to push it. They started to push it. Why do they want to make all of us Christians? We're not doing it again. Take Bible out of school. Finally, they said you can't pray in schools anymore. And they left the door. And they brought guns into the schools. They are all now shout. They never see anything. Covenants. You see, generations after we suffer when we break covenants. And I don't know a love higher than the love of a parent for their child. I, I cannot love anybody the way I love my children. Unfortunately, it's the truth. Because the, why, the reason I say unfortunately because there are some other people who want me to love them more than I love my children. It's never going to happen. Do you get it? And because that is the case, I don't want to die and my children are suffering because of something I did. Hey. No. You are a wicked person before you left for your children is suffering. You may not leave money. You may not leave a house. But don't leave them inherited suffering. Don't do that. Praise Jesus. The Nigerian Civil War was a place where men and women were killed who had no business dying. Every nation that there is war, it takes mercy, deep mercy. And there are people recognizing on the national level that deep repentance is required. See Nigeria, blood is crying out too much. And not only the blood of the civil war, even today, there's blood being spilled because people are desperate to say they made money. And you think that is that the God of heaven who has said thou shalt not kill, that he will fold his hands and give you the best president ever. You don't know what you are saying. There are things we need to repent of. And repentance means that you say, Lord, I'm sorry for the one I did and I will never do it again. You don't repent yesterday and do it again today in another way. Think about it. <sighs> Praise God. Nobody paid the rent for this place for me. So, Exodus 20 verse 5. Iniquity can be passed down even to the fourth generation. And then we say, oh, the Bible says no longer will the fathers eat white grapes and the children, sour grapes and the children's teeth be set on her edge. That is if it is not a covenant, amen. If it is a covenant, it transcends generations. It transcends generations. Praise Jesus. There are long-term consequences for breaking God's law. So sometimes we should consider these, those after us and stop. Even if, again, let me say one more time, if you not do it for yourself, do it for your children. If you not do it for yourself, do it for your children. If you not do it for yourself, do it for your children. Brethren, the new covenant is where we are part of. I know that. Because I finished the, um, the, the, the pillars of divine covenant. The new covenant is also a divine covenant. Here's the point I want you to see, that those pillars... They apply. They apply. That's why Jesus died to give us life and life more abundantly. But until you say, Lord Jesus, I have been a sinner. I repent of my sins. Have mercy on me. I now receive you as my Lord and my personal Savior. You can go to church oh, until you become a Bible. You will go to hell. Because it is not going to church that makes you eligible for heaven. What makes you eligible for heaven is that you gave your life to Jesus. And you, from that moment, you started to live for him. 
You can give all the offering in this world until you carry CBN and all the mint and give it to us. We will take it and we will pray for you. But our prayer will not go anywhere if you don't accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You will have all the things that life can give you. You will have houses. You will have cars. You will buy private jets. You will do all of those things. But when you die, you will still go to hell. If the new covenant is, does not have these pillars, we will just come to church and all will be fine. After all, Jesus has died already. Use your brains. That's what I'm saying. You see, this Bible is so intelligent a book that we must sit down. You don't need to be a, a professor to sit down and allow your brain to process it. After all, in your house, not all of us came. I came from a village where there was not electricity at some point. When I, my, by the time I was born and I was growing up, I saw Nepa. You know, then it was Nepa. We saw electricity, yes. Then we, but as I came to Lagos, I've seen other things. You know, if you have not seen it, you've watched it in movie. Somebody will clap, the lights will go off. Somebody will clap, the lights will come on. So even if you didn't know that that kind of light existed, now that you came, you came to my house. The first day I clap, light come on. As we won't sleep, I clap, light go off. Should be tomorrow. If only you did for us, if darkness come, you too, you go clap. You go see, say, light, come on. That is growth. What did you do? You used your brain. Why will you not use your brain in the Bible? Do you understand me? Being a believer is not hard at all. The New Testament captures the new covenant. Captured in that covenant is the opportunity of a great life. Devoid of the many complications of key ram, key goats, spring sparrow, bring this one that is in the old, old covenant. Yet in, in Hebrews chapter 7, the Bible says Jesus is the mediator of this new covenant. Therefore, to enjoy his capacity to save us daily, we must align ourselves to ensure we live by these pillars. Because the new covenant is a covenant too. And if these are the pillars of divine covenant, these are the pillars of the divine of the new covenant. Does this make sense? So to experience abundant life in Christ, we must understand and live against to God according to God's covenantal relationship. You can't say because I'm a believer, it's free for all. It's not free for all. Mm -mm, mm, nah, not, no, no, mm -mm, no. We must know how God's kingdom agenda operates, and we must stay aligned. That's the call. That's why this kingdom is not administered by somebody on somebody based on somebody's whims and somebody's caprices. They are they are administered by a set order, and that also allows for continuity. So the believer who lived where in 1840. It did, we not live different from the believer who's living in 2024. They may live in, a dif in different civilizations. They may do different, but their lives are the same. No. It is important for every one of us to understand this. The old covenant is voided by the new. But the Old Testament, which is a compilation of standards, ethics, and sanctions of how to live in God, is not voided. In Hebrews 13 verse 8, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In Genesis, he was Jesus, the God, the Son. In Revelation, he's Jesus, God, the Son. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the Old Testament, God was God as he is God in the new. If you get this, you will thrive in God's kingdom. I want you to stand on your feet and I want you to take this new body of knowledge and I want you to begin to speak to heaven by yourself. I imagine that someone who knows what they are doing is busy repenting right now saying, oh Lord, I did not understand it. That's why I did this. That's why I did that. That's this why I did not. It's time to ask for mercy. Open your mouth. Don't be looking at me. I'm not Nollywood film. Pray. Ask God for mercy. And I did say stand. Your legs walk. Can't get up. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. Father have mercy on us oh God. Have mercy on us. As a nation have mercy on us. 
As families have mercy on us. Let your mercy rejoice over judgment. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. Have mercy in every way, oh God. I contravene covenant. Let your mercy rejoice over judgment concerning me. Let your mercy rejoice over judgment concerning me. Let your mercy rejoice over judgment concerning me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Brethren, I, want you, I don't want you to be afraid because the Bible says if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us. So let's say that, you know, we were acting and living the way we were before because we did not know this truth. The Bible says the entrance of God's word gives us light. So light has come. What you need to do is repent and step away and all will be fine. So let's go one more time. Repent before God. Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry. I did that and I did this because I did not know. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon my household. In every way we have contravened, oh God, your covenant, have mercy. Let your mercy rejoice over judgment concerning us. Let your mercy rejoice over judgment concerning us. Let your mercy rejoice over judgment concerning us. Mercy, O oh God. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's go back to Jesus. For those of us who have repented. But we had given our lives to Jesus before, but we're living lawless lives. Let's go back and say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life again. This is for the last time I give you my life. Let your mercy speak for me. I give you my life. And if you have never given your life to Jesus, it's also time to say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I give you my life this morning. 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 Father, I thank you and I give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Do you have your communion? Do you have your communion? I want you to lift it up. Jesus said, he said, um, this is my body, which was broken for you. He says, as you eat it, remember me. Then Jesus said, this is my body, my blood, which was shed for the remission of your sins. As you lift it up, I want you to activate the power in the communion table. And as we have asked for mercy, open your, your, your communion, break the bread. And eat with the understanding that there's forgiveness in the room. Eat with an understanding that God forgives. And that because he's forgiving, that every sacrifice that Jesus made for you and for me, that we are enjoying it and we will enjoy it in the name of Jesus is someone listening to me? Yes, Ask God for mercy and then break your bread and eat it. As we eat in the name of God the Father, Amen. name of God the Son, Amen. and name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And open your wine and drink it. That this repentance we have made today, that the Lord will speak for us. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible says that Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. Amen. And it is by he, he who makes intercession for us daily. That from this moment, his intercession concerning us will work. Because God's word has brought us to light. As we drink in the name of God the Father. Yes. In the name of God the Son. Yes. And in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Yes. Father Lord, we thank you. And we give you all the praise. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you are doing. And thank you for all that you will do. May your name be glorified forever. Thank you Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah.